Welcome back, you filthy exiles. And it feels a little weird to say that after not being around for a little while, but uh, I'm back. Um, so, obviously, we had the uh, the league announcement this morning for 3.18. And for the first time that I've seen it a very long time, there's no balance changes to builds. What does that mean? Well, we can play Giga Tanks, we can play Aegis Aurora, we can still play Skelly Mages. God forbid why they left that the way that it was, but you know what? They haven't taken away our power, so credit to GGG. Uh, so you'll see some of these builds in this curation. Now, this will be one of potentially three curation videos, this being the really safe option. Um, and obviously there's now Uber, uh, Exarch and everything. So these are league starters and definitely those are more end game builds, but it doesn't mean you can't get to that point eventually with any one of these builds. Uh, so anyway, let's jump into the, into the, um, uh, the video and uh, go from there. Okay, so the first build we're actually going to curate here is one that I played as League Start last league. Um, uh, and, and I actually did a full build guide on this, which you can see in this video. Um, it's the uh, the Righteous Fire Inquisitor. Now, the reason why I've got this on the list, this was just by far one of the most consistent build League Start or League Starters that I'd played in a very long time. Um, there are a few things that we got out of last league that obviously changed the game, being the new um, the the new Exarch and uh, and the other crafting <laughs> I keep forgetting um, the other crafting method uh, methods to get implicit crafts. Um, not to mention my particular build is a uh, is actually a max block variation that does spec into Aegis Aurora. Um, and from last league, what we also learned is as soon as you can get Legacy, Legacy of Fury, which drops from Maven, then that significantly increases your ability to absolutely destroy everything around you i uh, similar to um similar to having like an explodey chest except a really cheap version of that using scorch as as the uh, as the sort of damage proc now this particular build i ended up getting up to i think down down to close to 700 delve um it was super tanky the only boss that it even remotely struggle with was Maven at the end, and that's mainly because of the degen sort of components. But uh, but that being said, it, it did it did work to take down absolutely everything in the game and face tank everything in the game and face tank maps and everything, which is going to be really good with the Uber bosses this time around. Um, a couple of other things to note, I guess, is it does use replica at series foible, uh, replica at series foible, which will take you a couple of days to get in league start, and you just get that from heisting. Same with replica soul tether. They will be expensive items at the very start, but this is a max chaos resist build as well. Um, and my particular variation of the build was extremely cheap compared to others. Now, I'll put Pox's uh, League Starter Guide as well, because he has a really good explanation of how to get this build working. Um, but if you want to go down the route and use my Giga Chad uh, 700 plus Delve variation of the build, that's a little cheaper than most other builds out there, then uh, that'll be the... Uh, the, the two links in the description to the uh, to the build itself. Now I will also note that uh, that using fire trap is something that we all realized last league was the best way to get uh, single point damage up. And uh, and again, that's my comment uh, for 3.18 since there's no changes to this build. Righto. So the second build we're going to curate here is uh, is actually Phoenix's Vortex Cold Snap um, build, occultist build. Uh, so basically how this works, and, and also I should probably say anyone who's followed my channel, um, they will also know that I have a build for this, which is a little different, and uh, and was essentially the most Giga Chad of the Giga Chad builds, which again, this this league, doesn't, it needs no change, it's super consistent. Uh, my variation of the build is actually Chaos Inoculation, which means you're immune to Chaos Damage. Um, and, and it did use the Aegis Aurora, which is, you know, quite clearly, con considering the first two builds are including it in my in my list this time around, is my favourite item in the entire game. Plus, for anyone who's got the Corax Pass, uh, you get the cool MTX on it. Uh, so yeah, there is that. Anyway, how this build works is you map your Vortex uh, or your Cold Dot Vortex to your Move button. And you'll move around and basically drop that all over the map. That'll slowly eat away at enemies and then they'll die. You will never die because this build is so tanky that it just simply can borderline not die. Uh, and then that's pretty much a rinse and repeat scenario. You go sit next to the boss, whack them with some cold dot, watch them burn down and then move on and so on and so on. Um, this build has been consistent every single league for the last like God knows how many leagues. There's probably like five or six leagues, uh, even going beyond that. 
It's super tanky, and in particular, it's incredibly friendly for newer players. Now, Phoenix's guide, it's the same guide that I put up, um, that I, that I uh, referenced to last league. If you're going to run a low-life variation, if you want to run CI, then, uh, then please jump over to my video, and I'll put the link in the description um, below, and then that'll basically give you a run-through of how to build my variation of the build. Now, both of these builds, they actually don't include the implicit crafts, so they can definitely be even more powerful than what they have been in the past. Uh, and uh, there, there are uh, life-based builds, which I'll put an alternate sourced um, POV in the, in the description as well for a life-based life variation of the build. But generally, you just build into early life nodes, and then you'll want to switch to either CI or you want to switch to low life pretty much ASAP because that's where this build's going to get the most power and survivability. But if you're a newer player, this build is extremely friendly for you. And uh, and if you're somebody who's been struggling to clear the end game just because you've tried a whole heap of different builds uh, and they just didn't work, then definitely pick up my uh, my Giga Chad uh, version of this build. It will uh, it will it's a little slower in killing things, but it'll take your woes away. Um, anyway, that's the uh, the second uh, the second build I'd recommend for the 3.18 league. So for build number three, we're going to take a bit of a, a shift here. And this build in particular um, constituted of 8% of all builds um, or all Raider builds in the, well, I think it was all builds in the uh, in the 3.7 league for the first, at, at the end of the first week, that it was one of the most played builds in the league and, and maintained consistently throughout. So it's actually the uh, the Lightning Strike uh, Raider and the, or actually in this case, Ranger. Um, and generally, the uh, the reason for you, this particular build being sort of so popular is for a number of reasons. So last league, um, Evasion got a huge, huge sort of uh, fix-up. I think actually it was last league or the previous league um, that they actually sort of fixed the way that Grace works as well evasion, uh, as Evasion. And uh, they removed the dodge mechanic in the game uh, fundamentally. Uh, which basically meant that you could run full of Asian characters and they're relatively safe even with a uh, even with a relatively small life pool and in this case this build gets to about 5,000 life uh, by the time you finish decking it out now in uh, in the build that I'm actually curating here or, or I'm making reference to is from a guy called uh, fuzzy Duxy and uh, and I gotta say I really really like these build guide like uh, it, it's it's number one it's bloody 40. How many minutes? It's 42 going on 43 minutes of just uh, lightning, uh, yeah, lightning strike, um, bloody goodness. But uh, and this does use Val lightning, lightning strike as well, just to put sort of put that in further perspective. So he does run through the pros and cons of the build, and obviously there's always issues with uh, with sort of evasion builds um, as from the survivability stance and the random one shotting. But this has a great level of map clear. This is a seriously relatively easy build to level up with and and also get to end game. Um, you, now you can play variations of this with the Marauder and and the Zerka run, uh, sort of Zerka build uh, variation of this, which I put in my curation video for last league. But I'm sort of adamantly going to say that going with the variation uh, through the um, through the Raider, um, or in this case, yeah, it is sorry, Raider. Is going to be pretty much one of the best ways to play this build, and you know, eight percent of uh, of the players that played it last league by the end of the first league would agree with you on that notion. Now there are many builds for this, but I uh, I am going to recommend Fuzzy Duxies. I just think it's a really good build. Uh, links in the description down below. Now looking at the tree, the uh, the damage rate gets to about two point nearly two point five million DPS per projectile. That being said, that's also accounting for you know better league uh, better gear at the end of the first week including like a mark of the elder but as a, as far as builds go it's incredibly powerful and it's pretty easy easy to see why sort of people play this build consistently even this one gets to 793 percent crit multiplier at not nearly 95 percent effective crit so uh it's very powerful very easy to gear in that first week it's going to get you into those sort of end game sort of starting scenarios and progression through your map very quickly um, and the guide that uh, that duck uh, that Fuzzy's actually put up is is incredibly good. Um, so I'd recommend this one uh, as my third option for uh, for league starters for three point one eight. All right. So the next build that we're actually going to feature here, I had it in my list for last year. Oh, sorry, not last year. Bloody hell, I'm getting old. Uh, I had it in my last league's list, uh, and it's the uh, the Poison Concoction Pathfinder, uh, and in particular this one is from Asmodeus, 
which uh, which he's always done quite really good build guides, and I've I've sort of sat through this one, and, and it's a good 32, 33 minutes of how to run poison concoction. Fundamentally, uh, this this build sort of builds off of uh, faster mapping at an early game level. Now, from boss perspective, you can scale it up. Um, but it's real advantages in the early game, and, uh, and in particular, again, 8% of, uh, of players from last league by the end of the first week were running this build. Um, and, and, you know, that's also with an intention to eventually respec into something a little more powerful in the end game. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this as one of the best builds for taking down, you know, uber level um, enemies, but it is one of the best early map clear builds in the entire game. Uh, and... Uh, fundamentally, that's uh, that that's the uh, the full run through and and sort of budget ver variation of, of of the build that uh, that Osmodius has put together from a league start scenario. Um, very easy to gear, very easy to get started. Um, and as far as the uh, the defensive layering, it you know it is, has quite a bit of defensive layering, getting to about a seventy three point nine thousand um, you know hit pool very early up in the game or by the end of the. The time you get to end game mapping so it doesn't feel bad when you get to that end point um and you start sort of progressing forwards uh max resist it does overcap chaos or you know hits chaos resistance as well and that can all be balanced and uh and from a couple of patches ago poison concoction is just a really good build league on league poison has been a very good sort of build to play um from a dot perspective and this is no uh, you know no no exception to that rule as well if you want something really cheap and easy and maybe something a little more interesting to uh to learn some new mechanics with then poison concoction is definitely one of the builds worth looking at in 3.8 um 3.18 league uh, and also from its tank ability, it's going to be able to deal with the uh, the new content as well with the debuff little um, uh, you know machines that are going to be around you or sentries or whatever. So uh, it will handle the um, the lead content quite well as well uh, as well from a tank ability perspective. But just super safe build to play for the league. Um, so yeah, uh, Asmodeus is uh, uh, link is going to be in the des description, and uh, and then yeah, um, I'll leave you to have a look at that in a little bit more detail. All right, so for the fifth build in this uh, in this list, it wouldn't be complete without uh, you know the obvious Skelly Mage Necromancer build. Now I featured Asmodeus's build last time around. I really like his particular build guide because he has a really clear sort of um, explanation of how to get this build rolling, and also the uh, the variation of the league starter that he suggests is quite tanky and just as an overall a rock solid build. Pretty much how um, how the uh, if for anyone who doesn't know about Skelly Mages at this stage, which is like maybe like one percent of the player base of uh, of Poe might not know about this build. Uh, you know, it's basically what carrying golems used to be every league. But basically, you'll use the uh, the Dead Reckoning gem to convert all your minions into all your skeletons and Skelly Mages. and then you basically cast them as you run around maps, um, and you use the Flesh Crafter to have them essentially ignore monster elemental resistances. Now, this build can get extremely, extremely powerful. There's, uh, there's, I think, the Unitols amulet, which a lot of builds uh, sort of that get to that true end game use to sort of push past, um, you know, that damage barrier that it does eventually hit up against. But uh, realistically, this build has no issues with absolutely eviscerating everything in the game early up as far as uh, from a necromancer standpoint goes. Um, so obviously I can't really not have a build curation without it included. Uh, am I going to play it? Nah, it's, uh, it's too much of an easy mode build for me. But, um, but that being said, for anyone who's going to get started with the Necromancer, um, this is definitely one of the builds to check out. Uh, now it does use things like the Lion's Eye, uh, Remorse, uh, which is, you know, just a big chunky shield. Gets about a, you know, it says here 1 million effective hit pool. But, um, but, you know, it's never quite, the, the POV is never quite exactly bang on in that respect. That being said, that's still very bloody powerful. Um, though, I will say that the tree, yeah, there we go, 172,000. That's that's a bit better. The tree does not have Cyrus damage ticked on, so uh, just make sure you do that. Um, and that'll fix up your uh, your defensiveness stats. Now, as far as, like, the overall items on this build, uh, Flesh Crafters are usually, like, 30 to 50 Chaos in the first couple days. And that's mainly because Skelly Mages is a really popular build. 
Um, but outside of that, the Dead Reckoning gem is going to be the target gem that you're really going to want early on. Um, now, that does drop relatively frequently, um, but just be mindful that you might be sort of competing with people to get the get those two particular items on this build. But outside of that, everything else is pretty much very basic to sort of level out and, uh, and set up. There's nothing really crazy um, in the first initial sort of week of getting this build working to a point where you can just absolutely destroy everything um and then beyond that it's it's all just bonus damage it's it's free damage basically but uh anyway that's the uh that's the fifth build that i'm going to feature here and the link will be in the dis in the description for it and uh asmodeus does really good build guides as as mentioned he's got a lot of information in there he does also have ssf tips and uh and gear upgrade paths and uh and different things like that but uh yeah that's the uh the last build in this curation so yeah, anyway, uh, look, it, it's going to be a great league. I'm super keen for 3.18. I've never seen GGG just freeze patch notes like this as far as game balancing. So that I guess they've sort of realized that we don't want excessive nerfs. We just want to be able to play super cool content. They've, uh, it, and you'll see it, or I'll do a video on it a little bit later on. Um, it's essentially where they're increasing the, uh, the end game sort of capacity for harder bosses and more meaningful drops. It really looks like they've taken on board what the community wants and they're just giving us everything that we want. I could not be happier with the uh, the sort of current state of, uh, of PoE. Though I will say this melee build's still absolutely shit and I can't see a way to get them into a curation at this stage and do them justice. They do exist, uh, the ones that do work, but they're very hard to balance and get working and it is an area that GGG does need to look at a bit better. But, uh, but at this point in time, this is the first five builds that I'm going to curate. Uh, the second video that will be coming out in the next day will be a little bit more... Um, I was going to say the word tedious, but it'll be more interesting because we're going to be looking at a few builds that I sort of picked up on that were sort of not played, but extremely powerful and, uh, and fun. And uh, we'll also sort of meet the criteria of the new, uh, the new content in the game and be able to do that endgame because the, their damage outputs. But anyway... And when we get to that, we'll get to that. Uh, until then, enjoy this video and uh, and hopefully this has helped you figure out what you want to play for the, the forward league or at least get you set up at a, at a very early league start level to start planning your um, what you're going to play from the, from league start date next week. Anyway, until uh, uh, and also I should probably plug this. Don't forget to like and sub to the channel. And uh, until next time, have a good one and uh, bye.